Hey everyone, it's Ellis, and this is the Super Omeglodon Scuffed 13.5 Patch Notes Rundown. I am literally in the middle of a move, and I am filming this on a balcony in uh, Korea with a uber scuffed setup that I cannot actually even show you with the webcam because uh, it's... Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to go into it, and I don't even have a mouse uh, as, I'm, as I'm doing this, so I am going to be using the... The arrow key. So, Yumi is out in the patch, and I, not a lot has actually changed about the champion. And so, because of that, um, obviously my Yumi video that is elsewhere on YouTube um, is still just completely applicable um, to just generalized thoughts on the champion. Um, I'm very excited for the, the new version of Yumi to be in there. I think it's actually going to be very fun. Um, so we're going to scroll right past that. All right, Atrox. W cooldown decrease late. Slow now increases with rank. Our bonus AD increase are granted increase later. So W internal change, uh, 20 to 14 seconds to 20 to 12 seconds. And now the slow, 25% at all ranks. 25% to 35%. And I'm getting super paranoid, so I kind of want to make sure that we actually are still recording. Let me just make sure that this is recording really quickly, okay? Because I'm goo... Yeah, okay, great. Great. All right. We are, uh, yeah, because see, I have no, I have no monitor. All right. We're totally fine. Okay. All right. So, all right. Um, definitely scuffed. Definitely no edit, no pre-record. True facts. Okay. Um, W infernal chains, slow 25% at all ranks to 25 to 35%. So it doesn't look like anything actually happening here. Again, this is Atrox's last max stability. So you're just not really getting any aid. Um, the world ender is getting a negligible amount of bonus AD because Atrox typically, um, he's not a consistent side lane farmer in the sense that AD carries and mages are going to be getting a lot more of the CS as the mid late game transitions. Um, Atrox, not a champion that really exceeds like three items. He also doesn't build pure glass cannony items. So with that being said, I, it just does not really matter, um, all that much. Ash, uh, Q mana cost decreased. Empowered duration is increased. W base damage is decreased. R cooldown increased early decreased late ash is cool that ha a champion as oh, hold on i'm thinking of something else right now i don't know it's not because ash is on my screen okay literally because i just realized that the webcam is in the wrong part of the screen and i literally thought about that while i was going over ash everything's perfectly fine guys this is definitely not scuffed okay i mean you know i mean look look uh everything's fine okay Q, Ranger's Focus, Mana Cost, 50 to 30, Empowered Duration, 4 seconds to 6 seconds, W Volley, Physical Damage, 20 to, uh, 20 to 80, plus 100% AD, to 10 to 70, plus 100% AD, um, so, I mean, I think it's okay, I, I think, I think it's fine, um, this is, like, her spammable ability, so, they are, they are taking a lot of value away from Ash, and then, obviously, the R Enchanted Crystal Arrow, um, it'll be fine if you're ADC Ash, because you will end up hitting, um, level 16 in most games, but obviously support Ash is not going to be so lucky, so they are really hitting the, the initial, like, the rank 6, um, and the, and so rank 1, rank 2 on the R is going to be getting tagged a lot, and so that really will be felt in the support Ash role, and I think that Ash obviously is just sort of like the best ADC support right now, because people have not realized about, mis uh, AP Misfortune yet, um, so moving on. Aurelian Soul. So health growth and armor growth decrease. Q burst proc AP ratio decrease. Okay, so the health growth is going down by five a level. Even more reason now to have Roa because he's going to be less tanky. And then armor growth, again, going down by level. This is just going to make some of his matchups against like primarily Riven, Jace. Uh, those are two of the really good champions again against him in mid lane. Um, it, it's going to be definitely a lot easier for them. And then top lane Aurelian Soul is also going to get hit by this quite a lot um, with some of the matchups that he plays up there. Burst proc damage 20 to 40 based on level, uh, plus 40 to 80, plus 40% AP. And then start a stack of targets uh, max, maximum health 20 to 40 uh, based on level. So that is the same 40 to 80 plus 35%. So he's losing 5% AP here, which is actually not as bad as I thought that it was going to be. I thought that he was losing 10%. So... They're actually not tagging his AP ratio as much as I thought. Um, I thought that I saw a change on Twitter that said that it was going to go to 30% AP. I think this is totally fine. Um, he's not, you know, I mean, Aurelian Soul is still going to basically be the champion where when you get to like 400 plus cosmic stacks uh, or Stardust stacks, etc., he's going to be really cool. So um, I think in that regard, he's going to be fine. Still expect him to see play in LCS and whatnot. 
Um, Azir, base stats, passive, QW, and E are all adjusted. Okay, so, um, so he's losing a lot of health early. What is going on? What? He's losing, like, two autos. Armor growth up by 0.8. That almost doesn't matter except for Jace matchup. Base mana down by 60 doesn't really matter. Mana growth up by 4. Attack damage growth. Okay, so his autos are hitting a little bit harder. Base attack speed unchanged. Attack speed ratio has been modified to make Nashers better. And then attack speed growth is also significantly increased. Okay, so they're making Nashers more of a legitimate... Build path, passive stream is legacy, duration 60 to 30 seconds, wow, okay. Damage 140 plus 4 per minute, 15%, to 230 to 4, wow, they're making it like a real turret, wow, okay. Plus 40% AP, wow, the, the turret really hurts. So now, taking team fights around his, his passive and then summoning them in the middle of the fight is actually going to be really good. This is also going to make turret sieging um, a lot better, and it's going to make Azir being able to like split push, raise a turret with the Nashers and then summon it and try to play under it defensively also a lot better. So <clears throat> that's going to be very good. Um, special effects. Uh, Azir Sundisk will now play, uh, apply Azir spell effects as single target spell. Wow! That is nuts! Bonus damage to champions, 37.5% uh, bonus damage to 0%. Oh, wait. Uh, it's still dealing more. It's still dealing, it's still dealing more damage. Okay. Um, Sundisk health is up by, uh, almost 500, and then Sundisk armor is going up based on level. Sundisk magic resist is gonna be down, that's fine. Uh, Sundisk, uh, debuff loses 100 armor while Azir is away. Loses 100 armor and magic resist while Azir is far away or dead, okay. Um, cooldown 180 to 90. Wow, this is way more spammable. I mean, it, it, these are, I mean, that's more of, like, quality of life change more than anything, um, for sure. Magic 70 to 150 plus 30% AP. 60 to 140 plus 35% um, AP. So his Q is actually getting buffed. Uh, you don't need a lot of AP to make this just a flat buff. Um, so, I mean, that that's totally fine. This will be a buff at 200 AP and above. I like that they included that in the thumb notes so that, you know, people don't have to go and do math themselves. Um, you know, you know, you never, you never know who's watching, okay? Sometimes I'm watching, I get the math wrong, you know? Uh, mana cost 55 to 65 to 85. So now the mana nerfs are actually a little bit more problematic, uh, that his Q is getting hit, uh, actually quite significantly. E shifting sands, um, the magic damage, it, so the base and the E, wow, they reverted the R, okay. So it seems like they actually heard our cries. Um, obviously one of the first people to point that out was Nemesis, um, pointing it out on Twitter that the Azir changes that they had listed were actually, uh, buffs, not nerfs. And so they are actually nerfing his, his early laning phase quite significantly now with the, with the nerfs to Q, the mana pool and the HP, etc. Um, and now obviously his build path is indeed being altered. W, rise total damage 50 to 150. Uh, okay. So, uh, based on level and W, okay. But, uh, bonus attack speed granted while Azir has three soldiers, spawns has been removed. Okay. Um, Caitlyn, base armor decrease, base, uh, base attack damage decrease, base armor down by one, and then base attack damage down by two. So, we, I, I, I always talk about this for people that do not remember. Again, it will make her total damage dealt at the end of the game be significantly decreased. However, the amount of times where this change will actually convert to something in, like, pro play, probably non-existent. Yes, Caitlyn does dish out a lot of auto attacks. Yes, she might actually be... Well, one auto attack on Caitlyn, depending on, like, depending on the lane matchup, it could matter. This could affect some pro play matchups. Generally, not going to be the case. And I say that because Caitlyn is actually more auto attack centric than some of the other casters who have had, like, their abilities nerfed, like Graves or, like, Lucian, etc. Um, you know, Trisana, I mean, these types of champions, etc. But it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Fizz. W mana restoration, increased E playful uh, damage adjusted, and mana cost is decreased. Sea Stone Trident. Uh, mana restored 20 to 52 to 30 to 70. Note this is 100% uh, uh, mana cost. Okay. So um, that is really cool. So she has infinite, uh, or his, he has infinite mana while, um, see, I caught myself, guys. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's only, it's only been 10 years now of almost doing these patch rundowns, okay? And I, you know, I'm fine. I'm starting to get it right, okay? Um, infinite mana while CSing. I mean, I don't ever think that mana was really Fizz's problem, so it doesn't matter. Playful Trickster. Uh, 70 to 270 plus 90% AP to 80 to 280 plus 90% AP. So it's getting 10 damage. What? Mana cost is going significantly down. This is a joke. All right. So Fizz, there is still no reason to be playing Fizz 
when other AP Bruiser or AP Assassins exist. Fizz just does not do enough, especially not in the current, uh, you know, current the current layout of things. Fizz just doesn't do enough, especially not with current itemization for tanks and AD carries and, like, everything else. Fizz is just not in a good enough state, even though Fizz is a solo Q menace. Gangplank. Passive damage decreased. E now shows all players how many kegs Gangplank has. Keg recharge rate increased. Passive trial by fire. 55 to 310 uh, plus 100% bonus AD 0 to 200 based on crit chance. 50 to 250 uh, plus 100% bonus AD 0 to 200. Okay, so the passive is significantly going down. E powered powdered keg. Keg recharge rate is also by 4 seconds. And all people can see the keg charge. These are really good Gangplank nerfs. Um, this is really going to hurt a lot of the bad Gangplank players inside of solo queue, but inside of competitive, um, Gangplank is still going to be totally fine. It, it's just that, you know, he's being brought down a keg. A peg. A leg? Why am I forgetting these sayings lately? I swear, something's going on with me. Uh, Jinx, attack speed growth increased, W mana cost decreased, slow increased, R uh, damage to cap monsters increased. Okay. Um, attack speed growth going up by 0.36, uh, W's app mana cost is going down, um, and then the slow is also going up, it's gonna be removing tier 1 boots, and then our super mega death rocket will, will now match smite, which is really cool. So, um, I think that, uh, it matching smite is really cool, obviously it feels nuts when Jinx does pull off the steel, it's very rare, I think we're fine with it all. Um, the other thing is that these buffs, they won't really do much to move Jinx in the current meta of things, especially because Thresh is so conditional and that's like her best friend's support. And then other supports like Tom Kench are just not super great right now. Now, one of the things that I will say is that we do know that, um, Arcane Season 2 is on the horizon, so we gotta start the Jinx buffs early, okay? We have to make sure that it comes in. Cannon. Q cooldown, uh, decrease magic damage, increase W range indicator from mark targets added. E damage to minions is increased. Thundering Shuriken. Um, so basically, look, Cannon is getting massive buffs to his lane, and it doesn't make any sense why Riot is doing this to him. They're just giving him so much damage because it's his spammable ability. Um, a range indicator will be visible to Cannon when an enemy champion becomes marked. That's amazing. And then the lightning rush damage to minions is going up by 15%. So they're giving him better access to wave clear and they're giving him more lane poke and just overall more of an ability to bully lane. And right now the top lane dynamic for champions that are present in top lane, Cannon's actually really good against them. And so I actually think that this will probably make Cannon come back into the meta. Okay. Uh, LeBlanc, Sigil of Malice. Uh, new magic uh, for Trick's Killing Unit with either part of Sigil of Malice restores 100% of the mana cost and 30% of the spell's remaining cooldown. Sigil of Malice now uh, deals an additional uh, 10 to 146% uh, levels 1 to 18 damage to minions. Our mimic, RQ, will now mimic the bonus damage to minions of the original ability. So these are really big changes to LeBlanc. LeBlanc's already getting picked, so I'm not going to say that this is going to make LeBlanc become more picked. It's going to make her time just a lot easier in pro play with all of the, you know, LeBlanc spots that you would end up having anyway. Um, is it going to cause LeBlanc to get picked more? Absolutely not. She's still going to be picked in the same exact spots as before. Pantheon. <clears throat> Okay, so I believe that these are for Jungle Pantheon. Uh, base health regeneration per 5 seconds, 7.5 to 6 seconds. Attack speed 0 0.644 to 0 0.658, so it just increases as clear, um, especially on the single target camps, uh, a lot better. Um, Comet Spear is going to go down two ranks, or, so the cooldown at rank 1 is, is so it's going to be 2 seconds faster, right? Um, this increases his first clear by quite a lot. However, at rank 3, you're only getting a second off it. And then, obviously, at max rank, because this is his only maxable ability, um, first, you get nothing. Mana cost is going down by 5, but he doesn't actually have mana problems inside of the jungle. Q-tap wind up 0 0.25 to 0 0.2 seconds. I, I mean, this does not matter. Uh, Aegis Assault, cooldown 22 to 16 to 22 to 18. So, his E is going up. It's going to be less spammable, but they're increasing his clear speed in the jungle. I mean, these are not the kind of changes that I thought Pantheon was getting. He's still not going to be pickable. Kiana, Q base damage increased, E cooldown decreased, E, Edge of Ixtal, Elemental Wrath, 50 to 170 plus 70 bonus AD to 50 to 190, 20 base is really crazy. That is absurd. Now, she don't, does only get 10 at rank 3, and then Audacity cooldown 12 to 7, so getting 1 at rank 1. Overall, really good changes for Kiana. Um, I think in solo queue, it, it's definitely going to make the most impact, but generally in competitive, this is not going to necessarily move her. Ramas, attack damage growth decreased, Q damage decreased. Okay, so attack damage growth going down, Powerball magic damage is also going down by 20 at max rank. Now, there's some differences to Ramas max order, so sometimes you only have uh, Powerball at 3, in which case you're only losing 10. 
um, base damage before you start maxing the other abilities, but for um, things where you max Q, um, this does slow him down. Not by a whole lot, because Ramus's clear speed is generally really fine. This is just reducing damage from his ganks. Rumble! Okay, so this is the craziest change that is actually happening in this patch. Um, the E magic resist and shred is increased. Total shred on two hits increased. Rumble is very sad and definitely not overheating, especially in his primary role of top lane. So this is really bizarre. You guys know that I've been talking about Rumble in competitive for a while now. He's really, really broken in support. He's really broken in mid. He's very broken in top lane. Obviously, heat management, a little bit difficult for solo queue players to learn. But if you go back to the durability patch update, you look at the overall itemization changes that we've had since the durability patch update, and you just look at generally the, the, the flow of things, the way that Rumble's able to itemize, and just his base damages, this champion is disgusting. The fact that they are buffing his E to be this insane, the E magic resist shred on one harpoon hit, 10 to 20%, uh, Magic Resist Shred on two Harpoon hit, 20 uh, to 40%. So, I mean, it's just super good for Rumble and literally all of his rolls. It doesn't make any sense why they're just giving him so much more damage. Um, Samira, passive movement speed per tick increased, doesn't matter. Trindamir health growth and AD growth increased, uh, health growth going up by three, so he'll get, like, an auto attack and laning phase in terms of, uh, value from this, and then the attack damage growth going up by 0.3 is very nice for Trindamir, especially when he crits, uh, just very good buffs for Trindamir, um, who did get hit a little bit by the Ravenous Hydra changes, but definitely not, um, the end of the world. Um, a while ago, Twitch, uh, EAP ratio, um, the, 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 this is really weird, by the way, but whatever. Contaminate, uh, magic damage per stack, 35% to 30%. So, um, he's, he's losing a lot of his execute on his E, which actually does mean that you will miss out on kills now more often, um, with Twitch. So they are bringing him down a peg. Fortunately, he wasn't actually getting picked, um, that much in competitive, so I don't think it's going to do much for the competitive, uh, makeup of things. Um, but it is going to nerf AP Twitch. It's going to also nerf when you do end up rushing Deathcap second, um, in ga games where you're really curving. Um, relief, though, for all the LCK Twitch players and the Korean Twitch players, because they don't build them very well anyway. They end up going, like, Recurve Bow before building AP. As they build into Nashers, they build 50, uh, Control Wards, so they actually never reach Deathcap, so... Um, they don't really have to worry that much because, uh, you know, 30% AP missing from no AP is no damage, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but for all, definitely all the EUS Twitches and all the other people that actually do properly play AP Twitch, um, it is a significant nerf. Um, Zaya, E-base damage decreased, cooldown increased. Okay, so they're nerfing Zaya because she's coming out proactively um, in drafts, which is not a thing that Zaya should be doing because she is a reactionary AD carry. Um, and so I definitely think that when she's just coming out blind and pairing into things, um, without having to be a response champion, I do agree that it is bad. Yorick, uh, bonus damage from ghouls decrease. So this is interesting that Riot at least acknowledged that Yorick exists. It's sad in that it's a nerf. Um, I remember talking with Riot Froxen at one point, and I said that I, I wholeheartedly believe that Yorick would be viable if he had, like, 150 range added to his W. Because the problem with his W right now is that it can't actually set up for ganks, and it can't do anything in teamfights, uh, with the way that it currently is versus high-level players. Zed, base magic resistance decreased, E cooldown decreased late. So they're making him more susceptible to mages and enchanters and obviously like control mages in mid lane. Um, but in exchange for that, they're increasing his damage in the later stages of the game. I think this is totally fine. Jungle adjustments. You experimented with jungles having advantages in their own jungle for clearing camps. Does this incentivize early counter jungling and keep newer jungle players from getting dominated from minute one? Early invades and steals are among more miserable experience in the role and major contributor to players not opting into jungle. That being said, the cost of the jungle game... Okay. Counter jungling damage. Jungle uh, junglers deal 20% increased damage to their own jungle camps and scuttle camps to all camps. Okay. So now it's going to be easier to counter jungle. Uh, jungle camp gold. So this is really big for the power farmers. Um, who are actually trying to get stuff. So like Udyr, Karthus, etc. There's a Blue Jay right in front of me right now. Um, Blue Sentinel. Um, so finally, they're getting a lot more gold back. This is really big for a lot of junglers that want a power farm. They, they rely on items in order to carry them. Um, so it's really good in that regard. And then obviously for junglers that are generally low economy and stuff, they're going to benefit a little bit, but definitely not as much as the power farmers. And so I do like that we're heading back in that direction. Jungler lane experience, 75% of total XP to 40 to 75%, scaling from 0 to 14 minutes. This is really good as well. 
This really hurts the perma uh, ganking junglers. Um, this is a really big nerf to like Elise. It's really good uh, nerf to like Jarvan inside a solo queue. It's a really good nerf to like Silas in solo queue. Gets tagged by this a lot. Just overall really good changes. Sweeping lens, ability power. Huh? 90 to 60 to 120. Okay, so again, nerf to all the early ganking junglers. Uh, Cosmic Drive. So, uh, health given 200 to 0, however, you end up getting 25 AP, very good buff for the item, because, again, you're typically going to want, like, Death Cap. Now, Death Cap's going to amplify the 25 AP, etc. Um, just overall, getting more ability powers, mostly what mages actually want, uh, they don't want HP, typically. Um, the only champion that I could see this being, like, a nerf to would maybe be, like, Fizz and Echo, perhaps, um, but overall, it's still very good. Plated Steel Caps. Uh, an auto is an auto no matter the code. Steel Caps now looks for all auto attacks for its damage reduction rather than auto attack uh, tag with just auto attack and nothing else. Okay. Seraph's Embrace down by 10 AP. Missing 50 HP. Feels very bad. Archangel Staff just down by 10 AP. Feels bad. Grass of the Undying. Very big change for a lot of champions. Um, maximum health gain 5 uh, for melee, 3 for range, 2 7 for melee, 4 for range. So everyone is just getting tankier that takes Grasp and they're incentivizing the Resolve Tree a lot more. Um, now, typically in, in games where you're going to end up getting like 30 grasp stacks or something like that on a champion, you end up getting, you know, I mean, you, you, you end up getting uh, a little bit more HP and it's not, you know, the end of the world. So um, I think that it's a nice change um, for sure. Triumph, uh, heal doesn't matter, ARAM adjustments, and that is it. And then the Clash, Bilgewater Cup registration uh, begins March 6th, so you guys should have already been doing that. And then weekend uh, one tournament day, March 11th and 12th, I will try to have the patron uh, tier list uh, Clash change changes out um, before this weekend, but it is very hard um, because the move is absolutely crazy and uh, there's just a lot going on. Again, I don't even have a proper setup. Um, I would love to do... The, um, I, I, I would love to do the, um, oh, dodge penalties are increasing proportionally to the LP. Wow, it doesn't matter, because Riot doesn't tell you that dodging away your LP doesn't affect anything. It's always been about MMR, it always will be about MMR. Do not worry about dodging. Still dodge if you're getting griefed. Still dodge if, you know, something else is, like, going wrong inside of the lobby. Still dodge if you need to dodge. Something came up while you're in champ select. Doesn't matter. You get the LP back. Whether it be that you will lose less LP on a loss or you will gain more on a win because it's always been about MMR. Your LP isn't real the same way that your tier isn't real. Okay, bug fixes, quality of life, doesn't matter. And then mythic uh, shop rotation. Okay, and then we have upcoming skins. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do them, but the Broken Covenant Cho'Gath skin looks absolutely amazing. Looks Phyrexian. And speaking of Phyrexian, I'm, I'm still waiting to be completed by, 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 by Miss Norn. My lord. Uh, anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked there for a second, just thinking about the, uh, the glistening oil. Um, okay, so that is going to be it, um, and the reason that I'm not doing skins, obviously, is because of the setup that I'm on, and I don't want to open up more tabs and completely botch things, so, um, that is it for the patch uh, notes rundown, I am so sorry that it's super scuffed, and I hope to see a lot of you guys in the stream tomorrow for the LOL Park, we're going to be there live, we're going to be doing giveaway content with Korean viewers that managed to notice it and actually want to partake and, and other stuff, um, so the live LCK co-stream is going to be tomorrow, and, um, yeah, I, I hope to see a lot of you guys there for it. And then, obviously, LCS and LEC. And uh, also, a little, uh, little, little, little bit of a leak, but I am about to sign a contract, actually, as soon as this video ends. So, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> all right. See you guys all in the next one. And thank you guys all so much for supporting. See you later. Also... The apartment tour video will be out on YouTube in a day or two. So you guys, a lot of people asked uh, to see like what Korean style living is like and whatnot. Um, and so that video, the house tour and whatnot will be up here soon. So see you later. Bye bye.